It's tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Dave. I'm Murray. And today we are going to be doing something special, which is to make the very first ever Space Bears vehicle. Jazza doesn't like vehicles. I don't understand mm. why vehicles are awesome. So we thought we'd take it upon ourselves to force one upon him. So you've already clicked on the thumbnail of this video, you know we're making a Redemptor Dreadnought, but Murray, why did we pick a Dreadnought? It's such a Space Marine classic. You've got the imposing silhouette, the giganticness of it, you know, crushing its enemies. You just have to. So let's get into it. Hopefully with our powers combined, we can fix Jazz's dislike of vehicles and turn him into a mech lover forever. This was a first for me. Building a Redemptor Dreadnought was something I'd wanted to do since they came out. They're cool and chunky, and personally, I know this is sacrilege to say, but I prefer them to the tiny stumpy legged original Dreadnought design. Assembling it was a surprising trial of time. There are so many pieces to this kit, and while they do go together well, I did question how necessary it was to have this many parts, but I guess it's to ensure a level of quality and detail around each piece. But either way, it took a couple of hours to build build this model to completion. I've become infatuated with the concept of Bear Force One. <laughs> We're using a, what was the gunship again? The Either a Thunderhawk, a Thunderhawk or a Stormbird. I'm okay. not sure which feels right. So this is a $2,000 model. I think you guys need to show us that you need to see it. If this video beats our record for likes in a video, which is currently 17,000 likes, I am 100% committed to buying and making with the team Bear Force One. And, and should we go top comment, top rated comment over a Thunderhawk or Stormbird? All right. Or do you just want a Stormbird? Yeah, no, I, th I, think, I think let the you people- You tell us. Let the people speak. Yes. This dreadnought is named Bizan. Bizan was a space wolf of many years, centuries even, respected by his people. He fought alongside Us and Ursa, and he understood his more patient way of fighting. So when Gulliman's Indominus Crusade arrived, bringing with it gray shield stocks of space wolves that had been created on Mars from their original gene stock, that the space wolves themselves had known nothing about. The first space wolf successor chapters to exist began to be born. Not wanting to be left behind and wanting to set a good example for his chapter, the space wolf now known as Bazan chose to cross the Rubicon Primaris, becoming a Primaris Marine and setting the example for his chapter. Unfortunately, unlike most of the named characters who conveniently survive something that is supposed to have a 95% failure rate, he was made quadriplegic by the procedure. Trapped in his body and unable to fight is one of the worst fates a space marine could imagine. And the process had rendered him full of a rage insensate. He was incapable of even piloting a dreadnought. And yet, out of respect for his years and the wisdom he could offer, his chapter kept him alive for tens of years. Over time, the visitors dwindled as the space wolves began to feel that their appearance in their full body strength would embarrass Bizan. But Us and Ursa continued to visit. And eventually, when Gulliman created the Astra Prime Ursa from the space wolf stock and Us and Ursa was chosen as its chapter master, Bizan was requested to come along as a chapter advisor. As someone who could help bridge the gap between those born of Fenris, those of the Martian stock, and and the new recruits from Us and Ursa's homeworld, the new homeworld of the Astra Prime Ursa. Through years of patient discussion, Bizan found his patience. He found his rest and he found his inner bear. And through that rebirth, he reached a new state of calm that allowed him to be interred in the new Redemptor Dreadnought. Regardless of the cost that would have on his withered body, he wanted to fight for his people. And thus, Bizan became a chapter ancient, a warrior clad in the respected sarcophagi of the Space Marines. And that's a bit of the story of this dreadnought that we have made for Jazza. With the finished conversion, as you can see, it was time to pass it off to Murray. Do you want to convert your uh, mom into sp and space bears? Yes! Woo! <laughs> Do you struggle to find bear related bits and, and would you like a bus to paint? Yes! I do! 
There's got to be a better way. I don't know what I said that you can't do, but you can with the Space Bears kit, which is actually only available for another day or so. So go to the Puppets War website in the description and get yourself some Space Bear bits. I mean, look at what we've done with our Space Bear bits. We've done this. Oh, and we've done this. Oh, and we're doing this. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, so that's the and and thanks for keep watching. We're still watching and watch the rest of the video. I think that was a good pr professional. Especially thought. when you um, completely fumbled the first line and just kept going. I really like that bit. David done a great job converting the dreadnought, and it's now down to me to add just a little bit of flavour to the base. So I found some spare plastic parts and sort of took to tearing them apart, making them look all mangled and destroyed. I found some spare mortars that would make some really cool broken pipelines. I just glued those together and then hacked them apart. Then I just fixed the pieces to the base, forming a narrative as the pipeline broke and shattered its way down the stepped terrain through the dreadnought's legs. With that done, it was time to prime the model. Overall, we used the same colours and techniques that we used for the rest of Jazz's space bears. However, I changed one thing up and used the brown to also base all the red parts, as that would help the red go on smoother with less coats. There was a bit of experimentation on this model, mainly featuring the red. I wanted some strong focal points going around the model, and as you can see, I sort of added more and more until I got a nice balance that I liked across the entire model. This resulted in a red shield on the front, that one large space bear's shoulder pad, and some nice red markings going down the front of the sarcophagus and on the fist of the model. The rest of the space bears were already wreathed in pelts and skins, so it was a simple matter of using the same colours and just painting on the pelts draped over the dreadnought's shoulders. For the wolf, I went for a more arctic grey, and for the bear, the same colours as were featured around the necks of all the space bears. The claws of the pelts are painted both in a traditional bone style, but then with the bears, their claws are more ivory, so I gave it a heavy black wash and then re-highlighted with white. The Dreadnought has a lot of large flat panels and I wanted to add some character to the highlighting of them. So I went for a more Xenophil style highlighting on them rather than the traditional line highlighting. I think this really helped the red on the shields pop and gave it a very reflective feel. To really draw attention to the weapons and the sarcophagus on this Dreadnought, I painted them all in the same gold as the metal trims on the shoulder pads. Finally, we finished up with some nice freehand details. The base simply added some orange rust effects to our metal pipes and then painted the rest of them like we did with the rest of the Space Bears bases. First with the Agrelin Earth Overbrush and then the heavy blue grey dry brush to give it that cold snowy appearance. All right, who's gonna... I got. I bought, I bought our uh, little sergeant here just for a size comparison then we can slide next to it. Oh my god! He looks like a bear! Like, <laughs> it's so good! Oh man, and that pose is so dynamic. They look like a happy family. <laughs> that is sick. You guys have done an incredible job. That is so good. I love to, you can do so much more with the base. So I love that we've got like missiles and like steel beams and knives and like, like lots of like props. And I love, I love that the claw and the shield on his back are just the bust parts. Really? <laughs> and just no resizing, just no. literally like, like a glove. <laughs> but we've left one thing for you. Uh, this model, you can streak in grime. Oh, thank God. Here it is. Thank you so much. You make me Go so happy. Absolutely. <laughs> bit of streak and grime, bit of snow, and then I think he's uh, yeah. ready to head into battle. Make him filthy.
Uh, you've converted me. I'm, I can do vehicles now. Um, I think the requirement uh -huh. is they have to be characters, basically, which right. is what we've done with well, what you've done with the Dreadnought. And I, I think it just turned out amazing. I would like to see Bear Force One. You've made a conversion <laughs> of me. So make sure to hit that like button because if we can beat our record, we are buying a $2,000. <laughs> hey, Mario, can you come over this way? We'll make some room for the, sp uh, for, oh. the for the patrons over there. Just keep sliding. Thank over. you. Oh, actually, oh, no, there we go. We'll go in the middle here. Yeah, I'll you bet. know Billy's gonna put it. Probably already, it's probably already done. Let's be honest, we were talking for a while. That's true. Mm. That could have been cut back though. But there's, look, Billy, we've left you this empty space. Feel free to use it. But, Choose you know, your favourites. <laughs> we're, we're so cheeky with our awkward endings and our little patron-like overlays. We're, so, we're a cheeky channel. We're so relatable and <laughs> and just that friendly last reminder that the pre-orders for the Cast Puppets War Space Bear Bits and Busts are wrapping up today, well tomorrow. So you've got like 24 hours to get them. But thank you so much everyone who's contributed and participated in this event. It's been Space Bear Temp... No, Vem... Ember. Space Bember. <laughs>